Hi, it's Juliette. Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute acorn dangles on a lobster claw. They're great for attaching to your purse or to a gym bag or you can use them as zipper pulls too. Um, they're great for both guys and girls. Anyway, it's made by baking an acorn basically on a head pin and then we have this little leaf which is also made on a head pin and I've added a few seed beads and done some wire wrapping. Hey, it's Juliet. Welcome back to my studio. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make little acorns on head pins, which are great for dangles for jewelry or clips or tote bag dangly doos or anything like that. So um, to, to do this, there's a couple of things you're going to need. First, you're going to need the head pin wire. Uh, for heavy um, acorns, I like to use a 22 gauge canthal wire. And I like the canthal because it doesn't tarnish or turn crazy colors in the kiln. You don't really need to do a lot of cleanup work on it. I'm also going to show you how to make a little leaf um, that can go with it. And I like to use the thinner 24 gauge canthal wire for that. Um, I get both of these on Amazon. There's a number of suppliers where you can get them. For the uh, acorn, uh, we're going to cut oh, an, a piece, what is that, about two and a half, three inches long um, out of the heavier gauge one. And then I'm going to make two little leaves on a piece of the turned uh, 22 gauge wire. Now, when I'm working on the torch, I'm going to use this tool, which I got from Bronwyn Heilman to hold the wire. It's essentially like a pin vise, um, but it has a very small opening so it can hold the wire. Um, it has this cross in there, so sometimes you may need to go just a little bit off center to grab it tightly. Um, and you can kind of straighten the thing out. If you don't have one of these, I, I really like to say use it all the time. Um, you could use a pair of hemostats or some other sort of pin vise, um, what, whatever it takes to hold the wire in place. Um, for the top of the acorn, we're going to make some impressions. So I have this nifty little tool that I got from Leonardo Lampwork that has these little grooves in it. And that makes a nice um, decorative uh, pattern on the top. If you don't have a tool like this, you can certainly improvise. You can use a razor blade or some sort of tool and put a crosshatch pattern in it. You could also take the end of a mandrel and just like make little divots in it. Um, I do use uh, this um, marble round mold that um, uh, for, for doing some of the initial shaping. You don't have to have this. You can completely use gravity as well and just the surface tension in the glass to get the right shape. But I find this speeds things along so I like to use it. Um, pair of tweezers. I use these to take the wire out of here and put it into the hot kiln. You can actually grab the wire with your fingers. The canthal does not transmit heat, um, but you know you don't want to put your fingers in the hot kiln. You are going to need um, a piece of clear glass that you've pointed down to a, a bit of a point. We're going to be using that to pull the tip. So I like to pre-prepare this and just leave it out. Um, in terms of glass for it, I'm going to use uh, clear glass, you can use any clear glass that you want. You can use this in any color that you want. Um, and then for the top, for the top of the, the acorn cap, I'm going to be using an effect tray number 444. It's one of their medium brown colors. Um, I try to use a thinner rod or if you have it, a commercial, oops, a commercial stringer works perfectly. The nice thing about this 444 color is it's very viscous, so it feels very taffy-like. So we're going to start by making a little disc, and it makes that process pretty easy. I do like to incorporate frit into this. So again, any color goes, sky's the limit. I'll be using Forest Nymph, which is a Valcox 
blend. And then I'll be adding a couple of dots on the surface um, with a little bit of frit. And for this, I'll be using an iris green. It's a Reichenbach 136. It's a reduction glass, so it kind of gives you a blue-green metallic. And I like to leave just a few little raised speckles on the outside. Um, for making the leaves, I'll be using this tweezer. Um, it has these little grooves carved into it, which makes of the nice leaf veining shape. But again, if you don't have that, you could use a tweezer to make the impressions. You could cut it with a razor blade knife, or you might have um, another variety of uh, leaf pressing tool. For example, um, I got this one from Leonardo Lampwork. You could do something like this as well. So whatever you have that is convenient to make just the veins on the leaves, um, you can make you can make do with that. Okay, so let's make the acorn. So I took the 22 gauge wire and put it into the tool here. So let's get started. I'm going to start by using the 444 uh, in a commercial stringer. And I'm going to just heat up Oh, the top quarter inch or so of my wire. I'm just passing it through the flame a couple times till it turns red, and that's it. Now I'm heating up the end of my commercial stringer. You can use a full size rod if you want. And I'm just going to basically wind on a disc, and, and the size of the disc is going to dictate, you know, the size of the cap of the bead. You can always add more, it's harder to take it away. So I am heating the stringer, and I do not have the disc or the wire in the flame. Okay, that's about right. Just give it a little bit of heat the whole way around. You can see there is, I'll make it glow for you, there is a little bit of wire sticking out, and I will be anchoring the next step onto that. But here, here it is, just the wire, and I just made a little bit of speed on there. Now I'm going to take my clear and I'm going to basically put a blob in the center there right over the top of that wire just to give this all some stability and then I'm going to start working the color. So I'm just taking clear 006 but you can use whatever clear you want or whatever color you want for that matter. I'm just going to put a blob here and it's completely enveloped that uh, little nub of wire and I've sort of filled the cap more or less to the edges. I'm not being particularly pretty about this. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to build up a bit of a base of glass. And so for this technique, I'll be using what I call the Frit paintbrush technique, which actually I learned from Val Cox many moons ago. Um, and I do have another video on the YouTube channel used, called the Frit paintbrush technique, which kind of goes into this in detail. But I like the look it gives you because it, it, it uses the translucency of the glass and the intense colors of the frit in a neat way. I just like to take advantage of it. So I'm just kind of marbling this right now just to get it loosely into a, a conical shape. Just to make the next steps easier and you know, just fill in a few little holes there. It'll just make it a bit easier. You don't really have to be exact at this, at this stage. I'm just getting a, a rough shape here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clear rod, heat up the end, just touch it into my jar of frit, and I picked up enough. Um, whatever sticks to the end, you don't have to jam it and get it completely close, uh, covered. You know, we're trying to go for a little bit more of an ethereal look here. So I've got that melted in, and then I'm going to basically swipe it right on top. Now... You don't want to have the glass cool and be tugging a lot because you will bend the wire. It's not that strong. So you need to have the glass good and swoopy and very gently swoop on. So I added the first bit and I covered it up with clear because I want to have lots of light going through this. So I get a lot of the refraction and the, I don't know, it just shows off the glass name. So. I added another layer of clear, and now I'm going to pick up another bit more of frit. I'm going to melt that in, and I'm looking at my acorn and deciding where is the glass more intense, where is it more clear, and where it's more clear is where I'm going to start my next swoop and put it down. So 
I kind of, you know, I'm building up the color in a more or less balanced way. You can also preheat it and kind of stretch it out. Um, it doesn't take quite as much force as putting that whole swoop down on the end. Again, you want to make sure your glass is hot so that this flows on relatively easily. I'm going to go in and pick up a little bit more color. Melt it in. And at this point, I am just trying to get the glass and the clear on there in layers. So I've got the color down and sort of clear in between. That way it'll let the light kind of shine through the beads. And occasionally I go back into my frit jar, pick up a bit more glass, and then swoop it on. You can see when I swoop it on, the color goes on the bottom and it automatically encases it a bit in clear. But sometimes on the edges I need to put a little bit more clear. If you push on your wire and it gets bent, you can you know, take your rod or a tool and straighten it back out. So I'm just about at the point where I think I have enough glass. I want to put a little bit more color at the bottom, so I'll pick up another few little grains of frit. Just kind of put them on there and swirl that around just a bit. Okay. Now we'll cut off that uh, clear and set it aside. All right, so now I want to just do some, uh, some basic shaping. So at this point, oh, I lost a little bit of the edge of my cap, but that's okay. We can uh, build it back up in a bit. Um, and so at this point, you, know, you can completely just use heat and gravity to shape it and get it into, you know, an acorn shape. I want to melt in, you know, those gaps between my wraps. Um, you can kind of see the light, you know, some of the frit is on the surface, which is okay. Um, although later we are going to be reducing it, so if it's a frit that turns icky in the reduction, you want to make sure you um, coat it with clear at this point. I can use gravity to kind of let it go up towards the bead cap and fill in any gaps that might have been there. And that sure sort of makes it a bit stubby. I can put it in uh, one of the bead cavities, uh, a marble mold. Uh, you could use the top of a brass press. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Uh, you know, whatever you have, a marber, desktop marber, just kind of get it in the roughly conical round shape. All right, so I'm going to go back and grab my stringer, and I'm going to fill in. You can see right there where some of it popped off. I'm going to heat my stringer. I just have a little bit of heat on my acorn. I'm trying not to get the uh, metal too hot. And just add a little bit in there to fill in that missing bit. And that's okay. So the next step, once we have that in there, is to kind of adjust the, the shape and the angle of this. And we are going to put another whole wrap around this outer edge. Now, when I'm focusing the flame on this outer edge, because it's still got those bumps from where I wound it on, it can deflect some of the flame towards the wire and it can become weak there. So if you turn up your oxygen or turn down your propane, you can make your flame a little bit more concentrated. I'm using a miner, so depending on your torch, you know, you may have to work it a little different, but just be cognizant of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stringer and I'm going to just put another wrap around it, but I am, I am kind of dotting it. I'm going touch, 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 touch working my way around. And part of that is because I've got the glass up in the flame, not or the glass rod, not my bead. And I'm deliberately doing it that way. Um, because I don't, I don't want to get too much heat on, on the wire. But I also want it to become three-dimensional, so I'm trying to blob down a lot of glass there. And blob is the right word to use. So now I'm going to take this little presser tool and I'm going to um, aim the heat just at that edge, and I'm trying not to get too much heat towards the wire. And you can go back and forth from one side and then turn it 180 degrees, the other side to kind of keep your wire straight, and then fill in. But the idea here is for the outer, oh, maybe a quarter to a third, you're using this to impress into the shape uh, the shape and just like make little little divots in the cap 
that is on the acorn. And I just found this little tool is nice for that. And as you press it, it gives you kind of that nice defined ridge on the end. If you heat it up a little bit too much, you can go back and touch it up. If it didn't squish down enough, go back, add a bit more heat and press it again. You know, if a little piece broke off, you can take your glass and add a little bit more. None of these are really perfect in nature either, so. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm heating the acorn part of it. And I am trying not to heat the cap. So I'm getting some heat in here, and then I'm going to hold it vertically, because heat will rise and it will go up towards the inside. The goal here is for me to get some of the heat up in the inside because I'm going to pull the point. And I don't just want to pull a little divot off the point. I want it to kind of lengthen it a little bit. That's just because I made it round using that shaper. Um, you know, or you can just work with it however you want. But if you have the heat, you know, halfway up here, when I pull this end, it will lengthen the whole thing and kind of change the profile of the acorn. So you can kind of play with the heat and the control. Um, and how much is hot and how much is penetrated up versus just on the tip and adjust the shape. So what I'm going to do in a second, I'm going to just get a little bit more heat up into that glass because we were working on the cap so you know the acorn part cooled off. Let that rise up into the cap. Then I'm going to heat the tip and I'm going to take this pre-prepared pokey tool or pointy tool in the clear and I'm going to touch it and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to give it just a little twist because I kind of like the swirl. Remember, I put a little bit of frit on the end there. So I'm going to touch it, pull it out just a bit, let it attach. And you can see now as I'm pulling it, it's actually thinning it. Now this, since it was a cold joint, it came right off. Um, if it didn't, um, I can show you what you can do. So I'm going to just reheat it and attach it. If it doesn't come right off right away, you can like tap it onto uh, your marver or onto your torch, um, and it should release right away. After you release it, you do want to give a little bit of heat in there to round it off and make sure there aren't any uh, sharp bits. Okay, so next I'm going to just put a little bit of the uh, reduction frit on here. So I'm looking around on here and I'm going to try to find a spot that um, has a little less of the color and a little more clear. And then I'm going to heat right there. I'm going to touch it into my glass, pick up a bit of frit. If there's too much, you can knock a bit off at this stage. And you can kind of see there, I'm going to melt my frit in, but not fully. I want to melt it in enough so that it's well adhered, but it's still a little raised. Now I'm going to go oh, somewhere on the other side, you know, wherever you want some visual interest. Heat a little bit, touch down in my frit, pick up a few more bits, melt them in a little bit. So hopefully you can see this. And melt them in a little more. So they're good and attached. And now I'm going to make a reduction flame. So I'm going to turn my oxygen down. You can see my center candle is sticking out. And I want to just kind of be past the end of that and just kiss it around on here. Now sometimes you need to change the angle so that you're you're reducing around all sides of those raised frit beads. Hopefully you can see that. It's got the raised metallic in it. It's a pretty uh, blue-green color. If for some reason, you know, your point here gets a little bit icked, you can reheat it and pull it out. Um, however, that may take some of the reduction off, so you may need to go back and reduce again. So you can go back and forth until you're happy with it. Okay, so we're ready. Now, at this point, I could take it off of my fingers here because this wire doesn't transmit heat, so it's cool enough I can pick this up. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my tweezers because I don't want to put my hands into the hot kiln. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put it in the kiln. And guys, be sure to click on part two, which will be linked right here, so that way you can see how we made the leaf head pins and assembled the entire keychain.